All right, so electrical conduit comes in different sizes. What we're using is half inch electrical conduit that's 10 foot long. This is a contractor pack. You get a discount when you buy a contractor pack. What's really cool about this is they already taped it up for you. All you need to do is level the ends, turn them nice and flat, use your guide, Met the part that you've already measured, obviously. Slide it into the saw. Bring the blade down. Slide it right up to the blade. Make sure you're flat. Hold on to it. And you should be wearing ear protection. Safety first. Be careful, these are sharp, but you just cut 10 at a time, so it really makes cutting like 250 of these really easy. Now, the different types of saws that can be used, well, this is obviously a metal cutoff blade, uh, but you could use a chop saw and put a metal blade on it, and that'll cut through, but if your chop saw is plastic, be careful, the sparks might melt your plastic. Could be used, but that's going to take a long time. So, we're going to go ahead and paint these different colors because the map that we're using to put this together gives us the colors. So, if they're all red and purple and blue, we don't get confused. It's very simple. Cheap paint. Uh, yeah, 25 bucks in paint really goes a long way in saving you a bunch of time and frustration. And what you do is you just lay them out, paint one side when it dries, flip them over, paint the other side. It does two things. First, it makes it easy to put it together. Second, it weatherizes them. It'll give them a little bit more longevity so they won't rust. Yes, they're already galvanized, so they're going to hold out rust a little bit longer than normal metal. But this adds years to their life just by putting a simple coat of paint on it. So, you're spray painting. A couple of safety rules when you're spray painting. First, you never spray paint near an open flame. You'll blow yourself up. It's important. Second, you need to be in a well-ventilated area. You either need to be outside or you need to be in an area where you have a fan moving the air to outside. So if you're indoors, you want to make sure that you're well ventilated and wearing a mask. We're lucky enough to be in a spray paint booth that will suck the air out. So a well ventilated room really saves you in the long run. This great tool is called an arbor press. What we're doing is we're crushing the end of these flat about an inch and a half to two inches long. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a, a drill press and we're gonna drill a hole one inch down and centered on all parts right there. That'll be our hub. Now, I'm gonna show you how to press it on the arbor press or crush it on the arbor press and I'm gonna show you how to crush it with a vice grip. What I'm not gonna show you how to crush it with is a, a hammer. The reason why you don't wanna crush it with a hammer is because it blows the sides out and destroys it. They just break apart. So it's good to, you know, we want to have a nice, clean, rounded edge, no jagged parts sticking out. That destroys the integrity of the steel. Now, you got to make sure that your angles stay the same. So you want to keep this flat as you're crushing the other end. Same angle coming across. Pretty close. The great thing about making a geodesic dome out of this pipe is it's really forgiving. Now, your cuts, you want to be within a tenth of an inch. Uh, and your angles, you want them to be within probably a degree. But when you start bolting this thing together, it flexes on its own as you start to tighten it up. And it'll take its own shape. Uh, 
I've yet to have done one of these that turned out wrong, and some of my measurements were questionable. So here we are with a vice grip, and uh, I'm just going to get it to the depth I want it. And of all of the ways to crush this, this is the hardest. I strongly recommend that piece of equipment over this. All right. So what we have here is a little jig we made to cut our, or to drill our holes. So in the instructions, you'll see that there's section where you add an inch of length to each end of your piece. The reason why is because we're drilling a hole centered to the piece at an, at an exactly centered at one inch. So the center of this hole is centered that way. So we're, we built a little jig here. It's very simple. All it is is two pieces of wood to guide it in piece of wood to stop it and then I drew lines on here to indicate where the inch mark is right there and the center line right there then I line my drill bit up and here it goes so we're cutting this with a or drilling this with a nice uh, drill press here but if you don't have a drill press don't worry you can do this with a hand drill um, you just have to mark your spot and it helps if you do a tap which means like take a nail or something and hit it with a hammer so it puts a little dent there that way the drill bit doesn't travel um, make yourself a little jig set your set your uh, your bar in there and then just drill with the hand drill. Um, this can be done, you know, two or three different ways. This is the easiest. All right, so next we're bending some angles here. So what we're gonna do is, we just got done bending one angle. We're gonna bend another one. So we're gonna take a fresh sheet of paper. And we're gonna tape it down to our angle jig. Now this angle jig, I'll explain it real quick. It's a very, very simple piece of equipment. Um, we actually used two pieces of bed frame. We just cut it off, drilled some holes in it, and made it wide enough so that the pieces slide in. Well, and it's a little tight, so some of them you have to pop in. But then you just flex it and bend it, just like that. That's how we're gonna put the angles on. But first, we need to see how to find the angle, right? Well, on your paperwork, it gives you the angle for each part. And right now we're gonna do green, and green is 8.47 degrees. Now, this is an angle finder. You can use a protractor. You can also use a cell phone app there's some great cell phone apps out there that will uh, find angles for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this to the nearest degree. So let's call that 8. Now, because we're using metal conduit, this is one of the great things about metal conduit. It's very forgiving. It flexes. So we get to our nearest angle and our nearest length 
and let the metal absorb the bend because it does flex a little bit. So we're going to turn this one to eight. So right here, five, six, seven, and eight, right there. And we're going to set it here. So what we're looking for is the outside lines on these. So this needs to be square, which it just wasn't. A piece of, little piece of metal was there. So I want to make sure that my bar lines up with this line coming across. And what I'm going to do Draw some lines. Now you may say that's very crude. You may say that's very crude, but see? Lines up right inside the lines. And now we have our angles. Do a couple more just so you can see it. 